So hello and welcome to this, the Books Crypto Club weekly catch up on Zoom. It is Sunday, the 23rd of January, 2022, and we're going to be talking about, well, who knows, blockchain, crypto, ICOs, SCOs, TGs, any other three letter acronyms, really. It's really down to who the audience is and what we're going to find out. So let's see who's going to join us today. Hey, how's everyone doing today? Um... <laughs> It's only <laughs> down 50%. Don't panic. Yeah, but but my old coins are down about, you know, double that. So, yeah, not great. But never mind. It's, uh, as I say to people, welcome to the world of crypto. It's just the mm -hmm. way it is at times. So. And it, it's always fascinating when you look at some of um, the, the, the Facebook groups or with the WhatsApp groups or Telegram groups. And you got people saying, oh, no, you know, what's going on? And this is crazy. Mm -hmm. And doom desperation everything it's like no this is just another week of crypto just get used to yeah. it yeah that's not so good but but so far they they never really say oh it's officially the bear market and now all the youtubers are saying that so but what could i do i mean everything is staked for like the next six months to a year so I can't do anything yeah. if it's staked for six months or a year you know if, yeah. if you go back it'd be back year, up yeah, and, exactly. And, and look where you were then, and go forward a year. You'll probably be where you are now, where where you were two months ago. So, <laughs> so I wouldn't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> yeah, but two 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 months ago, I got hacked and I virtually lost all my money. So, it's going to, uh, yeah, I've got I've got less now than I had probably six seven months ago. So. Oh, right. that, hang, hang in there and hopefully it'll all sort out see where it yep. goes <laughs> so, so i see we've got a new a few new faces today or a few names at least uh, mark do you want to say hi mark hello how hey. are you i'm good thank you thanks for joining us today where are you dialing in from today mark i am from uh new york <laughs> wow oh. in the states <laughs> yeah yeah no we, we get people from all over the place sometimes we just get two people on so i've had it before now where it's just been me and sam or me and rob or me and ellen uh, and then other times you get people from uh, the west coast mainland europe uh, everything so gr great for you to join us today hi there and Ma Likewise, mike thank you yeah and um, michael as well hi michael you've been with us before i i have not just uh a friend of mine from london told me to jump on i'm in dc cool Washington, DC. There you go. So we've got we've got the U.S. contingent in today, so <laughs> that's great. And then uh, a little more locally around Europe and UK, we've got Ernie. Ernie, where are you today? Sam, which planet are you on today? Well, I'm on planet Boscat. Man, my NFTs they've gone through <laughs> the roof. I'm saying the biggest gains I've made on NFTs lately. That, that's what I was going to ask actually. Of how, how's the NFT market furring when all the cryptos are uh, all over the place? It maintains its value in fiat. Okay. If it's a if, if it's a worth if it's a project with sufficient hype, utility, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, it will it um so I bought a boss cap rocket for two hundred and fifty ADA. It's now worth three thousand two hundred and it went up with the crash. So when 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 the crash it's retained its fiat value which is very good. It's a very, very hot project. I have to say it's got adoption from American basketball players. It's got its own metaverse coming out. It's made by the same people as Board Ape Yacht Club. I'm so glad. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's good. So you've, you've over 10 x on that, which is no mean feat. Uh, but, but the unusual thing, I guess, is if you've 10 x it in fiat, that's quite an achievement because what sometimes happens is that you, you see something go up in terms of crypto price, or in terms of units of crypto, but the crypto price comes down. So that, that's nice. Okay. So is that within a, is that like an NBA top shots type of NFT then? It's, it's like um, a collectible? It is a collectible. It's 10, yeah, it's a 10,000, uh, there's 10,000 of them. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it is a collectible. Um, it's just the way it's marketed. It's marketed exactly the same way as Board 8 Yacht Club, but it's not on Ethereum, it's on Cardano. Okay. So it's a CNFT. And the thing is with Cardano NFTs is that there's a lot more upside because a lot of the projects are just newer, aren't they? Like, so a lot of influencers have caught, kind of caught onto that fact and now they've started basically shitting, shitting the hell out of Cardano NFTs and 
a lot of projects which I bought into on Cardano NFT. I just spread my bets. I thought I'll buy one of these, one of these, one of these. Looked at the most bullish projects and all of them are, I've two to three X on or, or 10 X on. So it's, it's probably been, I've, pro, I've made more profit and in terms of, you know, accumulation in terms of X, like I'm not talking percentages anymore. I'm talking X's. Yep. It's like a hyper bullish market, but obviously what it concerns you is like something that rises so rapidly falls just as hard, but yep. um, it depends on the NFT project. I would say from my, like research and a lot of research on them and it depends on like some people really hate nfts by the way they really hate nfts mm. <laughs> like of, i you, don't you, get you it <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm in an nft launch pad and i made lots of money but i don't understand i, I don't yeah no and i'm um i need to ask about cardano because what what the, it's being really hyped now and you've got this new decks or something Sunday's it was work. a bit of a shit show. It is, I have but they, to say. It is. I agree, and I complained <laughs> about it as well. So Charles. Yeah. Well, I tried. I managed to stake. I managed to get some liquidity, but not on Sunday swap. One of the other tokens. Mm. But I don't know what. I know it's important to do it because you know I missed out on Uniswap, but I don't mm. understand why. I just follow what people said was important to do. I mean, it is it like for me, it's worthy staking in it. Like mm. to be fair to to Cardano and Sunday Swap, they said it's going to be a shit show. They didn't. They didn't yeah. um, master. They said it's mm. going to take like three days to make a transaction. It we are is. just getting started. We have not yeah. scaled. This project is not scaled like that. And then, <laughs> and then, like you know, it's done exactly what they said. And everyone just said it's really slow. But the problem, <laughs> the problem yeah. is. The problem is, is that the mm -hmm. NFT market was going hyper bullish on there, and now mm -hmm. it's really hard to process transactions. And for all the reasons I didn't like Ethereum, and for all mm -hmm. the reasons I didn't want to buy NFTs on Ethereum because I hate mm -hmm. the transaction fees yeah. and I hate the, the slow pace, they backlogged a lot of stuff on Cardano now. So now, whereas before you'd have an instantaneous transaction on yeah. a smart contract, mm -hmm. now it's like you know you could wait six hours for it to process. Like, are you kidding yeah. me? Like, that's, it's I, really I waited. Weird. 36 hours and then my uh my swap didn't go through because by then you know the sunday swap token was nearly one cardano where yeah so it failed but then i realized you have to do it for market value which so i submitted one again this mm. morning and i'm still waiting but i'll probably get one sunday swap token for 20 cardano or something to, to oh, be well. honest though I, i'm surprised at the speed of which Sunday swap would come out because I didn't think it was going to come out this early in January. Mm. I thought that Sunday swap was going to come out like end, like maybe quarter two. So yeah. I was actually surprised by the speed of which it, it has um, come, like been processed, shall we say. So mm. then maybe Hydra, and if Hydra scales, I was reading on Coin Bureau, right? it's ridiculous. You're talking about three million transactions. Like, is it a, a second or a minute? Like, with all its stake impulse. The transaction speed of Cardano, with when the when Hydra goes through, theoretically, theoretically, okay. is around that, and that would blow Solana, like all other rival projects, just completely out of the water. I mean, it's a massive if, but if it do, if it does, we're talking. <laughs> about so is is that Hydra or is that Hi, um, Hydera? So so Hashgraph. I think it's like from what I've read. And like H, I H bar, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I thought it was a Hydra scaling solution. So when I basically I sat oh, yeah. down, and okay. I watched the Coin Boy Bureau video, took some notes, and did some research, and wrote wrote an article for a private website. And as I sorry, as far as I'm concerned, it's Hydra. But you know, I could have made a human error there. Okay. It's just that per per performance and scaling is something that Hadira Hashgraph was making a big play on a while ago. Because that that is not a blockchain based platform, it's um, it uses a slightly different methodology, which makes it very very fast. And I was just kind of curious. Maybe we'll come back to that in a minute. I just want to say hi to. Mm. We've just had someone join who says NHR team. I don't know who or what NHR team is. <laughs> you want to you want to say hi and say who you really are? Hey, this is Nick here. Nick. Hey there. 
it sounds like we've got a complete US versus Europe uh, contingent today <laughs> listening to the actors, which is fantastic. Maybe it's worth just um, from the, the US participants. So I know we've got someone from Washington and from New York. Uh, in terms of the, the NFT market, first of all, are you focusing um, a great takeoff on that or are you more focused on the crypto side of things? I don't know, Mark or Michael, you might be able to offer a view on that or Mick. I haven't uh, done anything in uh, NFTs because I just I just don't understand the the value in some of the the things right now yet. I just feel like it's so just crazy skeptical. I understand long term value, but I just don't get it yet at this point. So I haven't even touched it. Okay, yeah, uh, that's fair. And uh, I think it's often the case with these new things as they come in that people just don't get things, and some for some people it doesn't stop them. They they go for it anyway. <laughs> and for others a little bit more conscious that that's far enough cool okay and we've ju just had um who else has just joined us as well Ken Ulf coming in today cool so in terms of what's going on in the market at the moment has anyone got any views i know it's been a bit of a bloodbath um as i was saying at the beginning it, it's just the world of crypto i think bitcoin dropped by about 50 percent or something over the last few weeks or few days yeah do you know that big trigger for that thing, Gary? So I always believe that the trigger of any activity in crypto is a butterfly flapping its wings in the Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it really is that. Because you, you get it all the time where people keep saying, oh, is this because China's banned crypto? Well, no, because Bitcoin's yeah. already banned in China. It's just that they keep reminding everyone once a year. Is it because Russia's banned crypto? No, because it's been banned for there a while. Is it because Elon Musk has sent a tweet out with a picture of his dog? No. Oh, or in fair enough, in, in Dogecoin's case, that is often the case. <laughs> but yeah. but the, the reality is, you know, you could put it down to global rising temperatures, um, threats of invasions in countries. It could be anything. The reality is I, I, I thought know. it was um, rising interest levels, so it's more uh, lucrative to invest in more traditional things. That's what I mm. heard. I, I and, don't think that really holds, holds water because they're not going to be able yeah. to raise interest rates to levels that are going to sustain investment. You know, they mm. can't afford it. They are in debt. Every single government in the world is into debt up to its mm. eye because they've all borrowed too mm. much and they've set yeah. those interest rates low. And it doesn't suit us, but it suits them. Yeah, they can't put the interest rates up. If they do, they will become that's, bankrupt. Like yeah, it's yeah. just impossible. That, so, I like that, it's, that, that, it's, just, it's an excuse for me. It's just for me. It's just classic Elliott wave patterns. All they do, they just play out. Go, Two go months for, ago, go, go for it, it, Mark. You were going to Mark. You were going <laughs> to say something. There. Well, I was going to say about inflation. Everybody's saying, "Oh, inflation is ridiculous." But exactly, you've just said all the reasons why they can't raise interest rates. Mm. So it's just, you know, I think it's going to be so what, isn't it? It's going to be a bit of a blip on inflation, but hopefully things will stabilise. But, but there the, is this whole thing with containers, isn't there? There's so many things that are messed up at the moment. Yeah. That, you know, there's not mm. enough containers, there's not enough goods moving, and it's all because of things being backed up. And, yeah. yeah the, when that the, sort of clears, hopefully things will get back to normal. But the, the other thing to watch out for as well is they keep talking about, um, you know, all the countries are bankrupt around the world. If you think about it, yeah, but you know, what's um, new? You know, well, well, certainly that it's, it's it's been that way for a long, long time. Yeah, Portugal, but, Spain, Greece. Yeah. But so, but, yeah. ac but actually, if if every country is in debt, if you kind of net that out, so the world is in a closed system. So if amongst all of us we're all in debt to each other, if you actually net it all out, that means no one's in debt. You know, it, it should come down to zero. So I, I'm not at all convinced by this thing that all the world is in debt. Because that means someone somewhere is owed an awful lot of money. And yet yeah, but they it's all aren't. central banks. But it's yeah. central banks, isn't it? Because they're doing quantitative easing. So yeah. they're taking on that debt. But then that's it's, so what? You know, that, that's against the, 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 the countries. And they're never going to, you know, the big countries are never going to go like, you know, Portugal, Greece and Spain because they're not tourist economies. We're proper industrialised economies. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got a different thing, haven't we? So. And, and, you're, and you're right. So all, all the central banks do is they keep printing more money, which mm. de devalues money. So that's yeah. where you get inflation. So it, in, inflation is a thing that happens anyway, irrespective of interest rates in some way, which kind mm. of comes back to, I think, Ellen's point about how 
crypto might be thought of as a safe harbor in some way. But yeah, we, we need someone who's into economic theory to come on and chat about this sometime. I was teaching this the other day. So I was teaching, um, because obviously I teach history, right? So I was teaching in the British Empire infrastructure projects. So uh, at, in, at the end of the 1800s, Britain built something called the Lunatic Line. So it was a Uganda railway line. And it cost five million pounds. <laughs> and I looked at five million pounds. I thought, well, how much was, is that worth today? It was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions. And this beautiful chart came out. And it showed you the inflation level. And the inflation levels, it's basically since the 1950s, inflation has gone through the roof. And it showed you the purchasing power of the pound. And it's gone exactly the other way. So this game has been played out for over 100 years. <laughs> like, mm. like, there's <laughs> something horrible going on. Yeah. Uh, and now we have HS2, which will probably cost every bit as much as the Uganda line <laughs> and, and probably deli deliver even less value on yeah, it. Cross, so. Crossrail was the other thing, isn't it? And that's not even finished. They're doing Crossrail too, aren't they? So it's, yeah. Just, yeah. it's just another, as you say, infrastructure projects are about spreading the money, you know, to Costain and all the other places, aren't they? That's why they're, why they're done. It's yeah. um, not necessarily for the infrastructure. So. Exactly so. And see, so we've got um, Holger Sprang has joined us as well. Um, hi, Holger. Is Holger going to come up? Yes, hi, I'm here. I'm, thanks, thanks a lot for the invitation. Hey, no problem. Well, welcome aboard. See ya. Um, we've got a nice mixture of people today, some of whom have got the camera on, some of whom haven't. For anyone where this is the first time you've been on one of these sessions, we, do, we don't have an agenda as such. We're open to talk about anything that you want to talk about. So if anyone has got any questions that they'd like to raise because they're new in the crypto market and they want to learn about it um, or they're experienced and they've got some news or some views, please just um, fire away and join in. And um, hopefully Ernie, who's just turned his camera on, might now be able to say hello. Hey, Ernie. Uh, hello, Gary. I've been sitting here listening, intrigued. So I'm just... I will carry on listening, and no, I will but, back in as you know when, when I need to. Yeah, and that's another thing for, for everyone who's come on today as well, that sometimes for the people who are a little bit newer to this stuff, it's worthwhile just listening to a, what, it for a while, and you'll probably understand about 10% of it or something. But if the, you then come back and you come back, and next time you, you'll understand 15% and 20% and so on. So we keep improving on that. So, so th thank you, Annie. Welcome back again. We've got um, Cole Barrett to join us as well. Hi, Cole. It's like turning into a radio show, this, isn't it? There's lo lo loads of people coming on today, which is great. So, no. so who's got any other views on what's going on in, in the crypto space at the moment? Anything of interest? No? Uh, is everyone surviving Bitcoin at the moment with it dropping from, it's gone from 43 to 35? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's Nick here. I think it's pretty much tied to NASDAQ now, right? The crypto market is, you know, going to be in difficult times until the stock market stabilizes. And then, you know, once the stock market starts rising, again, the crypto market will, will catapult. Okay. And I guess you have, um, you know, it's just tied to tech, I guess. Which is unfortunate. I think it'll probably take a couple of years to decouple from the stock market, right? So, so you think it's now the crypto market and the stock market are linked in terms of performance? I think, yeah, unfortunately, I think tech is kind of now that people just keep going out on the risk curve. Okay. So we're just a little bit riskier than tech. So, you know, now that risk is getting taken out, taken out and down in portfolios, cryptos unfortunately suffering from some of the ailments in the stock market. Okay. Well, if, you, if you look at, look at it guys, I mean, the federal reserve bank is basically going to stop quantitative easing. I mean, which will allow, you know, the rates to go up naturally. And then when rates go up, you look at the U S dollar basically will get stronger. And if the 10 year U S treasury bond goes up to 2.5%, I think Bitcoin would potentially go down thoughts. Why do you think that's going to lead it to go down? That's, that's kind of an interesting idea. That's just my perception. I mean, I just... Yeah. And, and the reality is nobody really knows. If there was anybody who really knew, then they'd already own their own Caribbean island and be incredibly rich. So, <laughs> so I, I get that. Um, 
I, th I don't know. Um, Sam, were you holding your hand up a minute ago when we were talking about that linkage uh, with the crypto market? I, I was. Uh, I was happy that it's gone down. Mm. Well, this is the time to buy, right? You know, like I only invest when it's down, and every time I do it, it goes really well. So, like, you know, <laughs> it's yeah, the time idea. just swim with the whales. You know, I don't even get nervous. I don't care. I don't even look at my profile, uh, my portfolio numbers. I don't check them every day. I don't care. I just look at the Fibonacci's. Where are they leading? Right, it's gone down to like you know six point two eight. Okay, I'll, or six point one eight. I'll buy there. You know, and I just look at the fibs. Fib levels from the swing highs to the swing lows. So go on, Sam. A great opportunity here. You've mentioned two things. You've mentioned Fibonacci's and you've mentioned Elliott waves. Yes. Do you want to just spend a couple of minutes for those who aren't <laughs> familiar with those? Just yeah, go into what no, they are. No worries. Okay. So I don't pertain. I don't pertain to be uh, an expert. But basically, Elliott waves are patterns which have been analyzed which which take place in markets because markets are just based on human emotion greed and fear okay so basically mr Elliot, okay he analyzed certain ways which take take place in in stock markets it wasn't about crypto but it doesn't matter if it's crypto stock markets gold silver you know they might have different time scales and the market cap cap may be bigger or smaller but fundamentally these patterns play out over time because of greed and fear so he's able to predict with a degree of distinct possibility or probability rather that these that these will play out and okay. i would say over a long over a long time period they generally do the problem is is that it's a bit like there's a there's a philosopher and i don't want to get too complicated but his name is bovius and he talked about there was a big will and a small will okay the wills of fortune and sometimes you might have a good day but is that the big will or this will within a will that was leading you upwards okay so you get waves within waves mm -hmm. so it gets a bit complex okay it gets a bit complex because you think well it's supposed to go down like according to Elliott wave theory but you get waves within waves and even and on different time scales wave with waves within waves within waves fundamentally fundamentally if you speak to if you look at on a very good technical analysis like block, blockchain backer some online they'll always talk about Elliott waves and they'll think that the market is going to play out for these reasons so one of my favorite ones is more crypto online he said that bitcoin was going to thirty thousand dollars two months ago based on Elliott wave theory now he's not right every single time but he's right more than he's wrong and that's where you make your wins right so that's for me that's Elliott waves and i'd need like a chalkboard really to <laughs> I've kind of like show you like like the different patterns like ABCs and one two three four fives and th things like that. On but you know if you, if you go to a good YouTuber they'll they'll explain that to you. And Fibonacci levels, if I can explain that. So basically <laughs> you get swing highs and swing lows. So you'll get to the bottom. So once you find once a market bottoms out, you basically draw a line. Okay, and then Fibonacci numbers are the most beautiful numbers. And for some reason, uh, traders just love them. Okay, and they're, they're, it's, these Fibonacci uh, levels are based on a mathematical proportion which defines beauty. So, like a human face, a tiger face, a snail shell. Is that and one point six one eight? Yeah, one point. That's that's the most important one. That's the one they love. Yep. And so, what happens is, is that as they they take it from a swing low and a swing high. So, as a market bottoms out, it can't reach any any further down. They say, right, this is the bottom, and then they apply these proportions and then mm -hmm. what they'll do they'll start investing at those proportions or they'll start taking profit at those proportions and that's why you know you, you see like the markets zigzag up and down zigzag up and down all the time it's because professional traders are just always taking their money out at these fibonacci levels so i don't know if i explained that well enough yeah so so certainly with, with fibs i understand that the concept of golden triangles if anyone takes a look yeah. at a, a photograph most photographs, you know, whether it's um, five by seven or whatever, they, they tend to be in a proportion. And that proportion is that the, the, the height, uh, sorry, the width is 1.618 times the height. Yeah. So th this is, a, as um, we're saying, it's like a magic number type thing that you find this in nature all over the yeah. place. And Fibonacci's as on sound is that it's a similar ratio and a proportion. So okay cool and so we've been joined by jt as well hey jt hi guys we're, we're talking about um all sorts of um 
te techniques and analysis like Fibonacci's and Elliott waves and that today, and the general um, interesting activities in the crypto world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I warned a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember? Yeah, <laughs> was yeah. I yeah. said, just be careful the next three, four weeks. Yeah, well, this is certainly a thing. There's a few people who are saying, oh, we could drop down in Bitcoin, for example, which is the one that everyone kind of hangs their things around about. It could drop to thirty thousand uh, dollars in the not too distant future, which I think it's at thirty five at the moment, if I remember correctly. So thirty four. Thirty four. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, it was a few minutes ago. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I was going to go. Uh, I, I, I try to avoid looking at the charts too regularly because uh, it, it just you, you can get a little bit hooked. And for those there's, who are there's a strong resistance at uh, Bitcoin thirty k and Ethereum two thousand dollars two k. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of people um, understand if that goes, if if he reaches. If it goes below 2,000 Ethereum and 30,000 Bitcoin, it could trigger a cascading effect where you know there's a lot of sell orders yeah, after that, because not because of many things you know the markets, the the, the general markets how they are etc., and um, it will just trigger a series of events, <laughs> including miners selling that could lead Bitcoin to go literally to 17 to 19,000 you know very quickly. Well, well, you're right. If you take a look at Ethereum at the moment, it's hovering around about the 2480 mark. So it could certainly continue on this trajectory down to the 2000 mark, which would be quite a shame. And then if, um, you say with Bitcoin, it's a similar kind of pattern, different ratios, uh, mm -hmm. but holding around about the 35 mark at the moment. It, it is going to be interesting as, as to whether that, that becomes like a resistance line and it baselines at 35 or whether it continues plummeting, because I, I don't know if anyone noticed um, at the end of last year, a similar kind of thing happened here. So 2nd mm -hmm. of December, where it went down from 56 and did this drop right down, it'll go away, uh, went, went from 56 down to 49. So, you know, a good 15% drop or whatever. Oh, go, go to the bottom of the, the, of week. the candle. Oh, yeah, but that, yeah, that doesn't really count, though, does it? Because that means there was no orders matching at that price. So, th so there were certainly buy orders coming no, in. No, no, there was the one. buy orders that got filled up very quickly. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you, you'll, you'll, maybe. But you, <laughs> so, you, so you're going to get the buy orders coming in, but you're not going to get sell orders at that, are you? No. And this is why it shows as a wick, mm. because yeah. effectively they're unfulfilled orders. Yeah. Um, that certainly the, the, the market was testing downs of 41, which you know, from 56 down to 41, is that 20 percent? The, the difference there was that the traditional markets or the NASDAQ that wasn't plummeting, it was doing the reverse. So this time it's actually worse. So, <laughs> do, 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 so you, th you think it's a, compound, a compounding effect of what's going on in the fiat market yeah. at the same time as the crypto? It's, okay, it's, it's quite aligned, I think, at that time. We probably find either were those bots liquidating people, you know, they, they saw a big opportunity, the huge liquidation. Yep. Or, or he was just somebody in traditional markets predicting this is going to go big, big time, really, really big time downwards, you know. So they exited then. If you, if you look, what we need to understand is I think the majority of of traditional market traders, yeah, uh, they came they came into this space, yeah, um, and when they exit, they exit from every asset they have. So I think we got probably to the point where most of those guys have exited, okay, on okay. traditional markets. So I think where we are now is potentially just um, the bots. And liquidating people you know if they think the barrier is not big enough at uh, at 30k and 2k uh, for ethereum there's a lot to liquidate between 30 and about 25. i'm talking a lot another few billion you know yeah so i, I was just looking at the bitcoin price 
And on the, on the one day chart, it does look like we're still, you know, dropping away quite substantially and that you've got no real indication as to where we're going to go from this part. But if you look down a bit more in detail in the one hour chart, it actually looks as though there's been some stabilization, you know, mm. kind of around about 35 to mark. Uh, don't don't go you, don't do that don't do that it's you, like you're not, you're not convinced uh, see this, not this at is... all because look there's there's a these bots yeah they are they do it on purpose yeah yeah They're really really good man the, the guys who have created these bots because they are there and trying to yeah. get people to, to on a bull trap oh yeah it's good and they'll buy in yeah Mm. And then at some point they're gonna drop and scare people, and the and the weekends, you know, are gonna sell it, and that's how they make money. Yeah. I, I guess that's the problem as well. That if people, so, certainly the ones who are leveraged trading, where that they've got um, positions where they'll close at certain levels, the the bots might well be being used to shake them out in some way, and and get them to um to to complete. At, at the low prices so yeah I, I guess that could certainly happen but there was there was a guy a whale uh where was it um it was a make a dow yeah mm -hmm. he had a leverage position of 600 million he was warned you know there was a warning by the the the, the, the team at make a dow and say this is going to happen in the next couple of hours and the whale didn't do anything and he was liquidated okay to the following two hours, 600 million, just one whale. It's crazy. So that, that's where it's interesting. We, we sometimes have Peter join us and, and he's not on the call today. He or his company take a look at um, the whale holdings. So they, they look at uh, the wallets uh, that have got the big values and he gets to see you know, wh whether there are trends of whales selling up and that kind of thing as a, as a broader indication. So yeah, interesting stuff. I don't know, he heading back to the, the folks over the pond, um, how are you finding the crypto market in general at the moment? People um, just playing safe? I'm playing safe for three months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did well, I can't complain. Yeah, or oh, maybe the other approach, uh, and again, it's, it's about looking at the opportunities as um, Sam is doing, is explore nfts so that's where i was going i was going to pick up with you again sam on that really are you where you where you're buying nfts are you buying them because you see a nice piece of artwork that you think oh that that's quite good or it's collectible whatever or are you just doing it blind like you're just buying into nfts simply because oh. they might they might 10x i'm taking all emotions out of it so <laughs> like um <laughs> like so basically i was a vc paid me to do an analysis of uh the nft market on cardano and the um and i had to go through all the traditional like, so all the like basically just do a bit of research so you know how many twitter followers how many discord followers um what you know what's, what's been the the price action over the last couple of weeks look at graphs blah 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 so it was very statistical and through that i, f I went i went i found like five projects that were looking pretty good but out of them only one really got um picked up properly by celebrities and bitboy BitBoy's okay. picked it up. So, you know, when BitBoy starts shedding things, you know, how prices can can go on small on projects that, you know, you think about the market cap on on, on an NFT project that's ten thousand, very small. And so it can really, really accumulate um drastically in price. So that that's basically um why I invested in them. And the one that, as I said, the Boss Cat Rocket Club, like that when I did the analysis on it, it was just ticking every single box for a for a, a kind of investment so that's that's why i did that but i wish i bought now three or four because the the profit on it has just been exceptional so <laughs> so, so where, where are you where are you buying into the nfts are you going on to like sort of open season rareable no no i, I didn't see the, see what i wanted to do was going to a, an nft market which uh wasn't i don't i, I don't want to say saturated um mm -hmm. But basically, Cardano NFTs and just explore them and see see what they're about. And obviously, I'm quite involved with the Cardano uh, community on Twitter and stuff like that. So, it just like to, on talking on Twitter Spaces just got me some like good tips. Okay. And to, to look at, look into projects there. And when I first bought into them, which was just before Christmas, 
uh, they a lot of people hadn't, but now what's happened is that a lot of influencers who are traditionally Ethereum NFT buyers, they've twigged on, and there's this guy called, they haven't actually got too many followers on YouTube, only like 7,000, but one is the vice president of BitBoy. So he's he's got, and he's just started absolutely talking about Cardano NFTs on, on, on all of his uh, available networks. And since then, the price action has gone really, really high, and with celebrities buying in as well, mm-hmm. like, like an American <clears throat> basketball player called Baron Davis, or Boston Davis, but he, he bought one of the Boscat rockets, and since then, it's like, whoosh, gone just mad, just mad. So do you think we're going to see the same where you're seeing that with Cardano? We're going to see the same with Solana? Because Solano seems to be accelerating rapidly in the uh, NFT space at the moment. It, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised, but... Yeah, today, uh, today was announced, uh, uh, today, no, yesterday, I think, or a couple of days, that uh, some NFT scamming project on Solana wiped out 1.3 million rug pool. Okay. Uh, they didn't, yeah, they were vetted, the creators. There was the guys going to create the Big Daddy Ape Club. Mm. And there was a lot of people that jumped in, and they, they just closed everything, Twitter accounts, everything, and just disappeared wow. after being vetted. Yeah, by I can't remember what was the company, but it was a San Francisco company, Civic. They vetted the, the dam and so on, all vetted, and people jumped in, and they okay. just did a rug pull on solar. It happens. Yeah. It happens. It happened yeah. on Cardano with furry foxes. There was one called Furry Foxes. Yeah, I remember. Guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he was he was talking on Twitter. I thought, well, he's a stand-up guy. It's like, you know, talking online to one of you guys and one of you guys suggesting a project after speaking to you for about three or four weeks. And you think, oh, this seems like a nice guy. And he just scammed everyone. Right, so it happens, man. <laughs> well, this is a, and in fact, you know, someone just shared in the chat about um, the, the MakerDAO. Um, yeah, it was me. Mil- uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, you, th- there's a, a link on here going, going to what was said on CoinCode about, you know, Dumping 600 million worth of ETH is um, pretty significant. Yeah. So yeah, the, 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 I think. I mean, it was a, a seven, seven siblings guy. Yeah, uh, you were. I mean, they put a warning out there and say, "Please, somebody tell this guy, yeah, to to top up, you know, to do wow. something about it. Otherwise, 600 million will be dumped on the market." And it happened. That's not great, is it? Hey, we've just been joined a little bit later on with Pedro. Hi, Pedro. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? We can indeed. Well, welcome to the group. Thank you very much. I've been in the Telegram group for a while. I just saw the the Zoom meeting and I decided to join. Hope cool. no one minds about it. <laughs> Thank Excellent. you very much. No, w- welcome. I'll just quickly ask, because I, I, I run various Telegram groups. Which Telegram group in particular was this? The DeFi London. Okay, cool. Excellent. Because I, I, I promote this group through various things and it's always interesting to see who picked up from, from which one and everything so you've missed out on a really interesting session already we've been talking about cardano solana nfts bitcoin price drops ethereum price changes elliott waves what was um a, a real mix so but as, as i was saying before to everybody that this really is open to whatever we want to talk about I don't know, Ernie, have you got anything going on in the, in the blockchain world that's different at the moment, or are you still getting up to speed? I'm just getting up to speed, Gary. Yeah. Um, okay. That's why I'm sitting here listening. <laughs> Little, listen, I, can't believe, I can't believe how far behind I am. <laughs> and I've only been out sort of a year or so. A, 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 year, year. a year is a Two lifetime. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Uh, that, that, that means that if you've been out for a year, that means you've missed the DeFi hype, the NFT hype, and you probably came in at the tail end of the ICO hype. So uh, it, it's a bit like, it, as um, Sam was saying about Elliott waves, but where you get waves, different things. Crypto is very much that, that, that you get these different waves of innovation and technology and everything. So it's cool. Rob, um, Rob, you, you, were, you were new to this. So you get up to speed now with, with all this? Um, y- yeah. Um, NFTs, I've not got a clue what you're talking about. Um, I see, I see little pictures that kids have drawn and somebody says it's an NFT and somebody's paid a million quid for it or something. And I just think they're off their rocker. Um, so I, I don't understand it at the moment. So I'm just listening. So, okay. you know, I, I'm only what th- three, four months in. So, um, when you talk about Elliott waves and the Fibonacci stuff, I'm, I'm starting to, um, 
look at that. I'm not using it to um, make decisions, but I'm looking at uh, historical things and how how um, the RSIs and, and Fibonacci stuff, how it's affected, um, you know, various coins in the past. Yep. To try and learn. Yeah, we just I haven't got reason. somebody to sit next to me to uh, to to draw me a picture. <laughs> Go on, Ernie. Just going back, surely these uh, Elliott waves and Fibonacci things have all been put into algorithms and AI by now. Yeah. And that's so you, you don't. So people are using them already. Just so they, they just yeah. literally press a button when it hits this, bang, and it's just automatically buy and sell. They're not even having to look at a screen. So, so this is where I keep arguing that technical analysis works in crypto, not because it's doing a technical analysis of the coin, it's because it's doing technical analysis of what everyone else is doing. What he's doing, absolutely. Uh, and so you're right, if, if someone's written an algo to automatically buy and sell on basis of certain trigger points, then if enough of other people have done the same, then the market will behave in that kind of consistent way. And that's why you, you then get people who know that that's the way some AI has been written. And so they play opposite it. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's all I think. Hey, you see, we've got um, George joined us. Hey, from, um, where are you these days, George, in uh, Dubai? No, today I'm in Cyprus. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps moving around. <laughs> no, 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 I'm in Dubai, but I'm busy in Cyprus. Cool, okay. And, and how's things in... Um, the Mediterranean and um, UAE in the in the crypto world at the moment. Lots of things happening, I guess. Everything is okay. Things are moving good. Lots of um, activities in the area of, you can say, uh, compliance, governance, regulations. So things are moving. Yeah. And you're doing a lot of stuff on the, the uh, event conferencing still, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Not conference. I mean, I speak about a hundred times a year, but um, other than that, I do mostly assist projects okay. with advice, advisory services. So. And I know that um, in the Middle East in particular, there was a big blockchain project going on a while ago, which was about inter-country bank settlements, Project ABBA, I think it was. I don't know, did, did you hear anything where they went with that? Because they, they did a proof no. of concept with that, okay. Cause it, no, they did not go too much further yet. Okay, yeah. Because they, they did an interesting proof of concept on that. I just wondered where that was going. So always interesting. Oh, well, well, thanks for coming along and joining us today. That's yeah, just cool. a quick jump in, jump out. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, every, everyone's welcome. And I, I don't know, does anyone have any questions or any comments about things they'd like to share? I posted a link about the Ethereum Foundation D dumping oh, twenty thousand ETH at, at the top, <laughs> four point uh, it's four thousand eight hundred. You know, that's very interesting. It, I posted a link. Somebody um, uh, wrote an article today about it. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm just going to share that. I I just do not understand why those guys also at right at the top. <laughs> oh, well, it, it's it's good for timing, and I guess it's good for the cash flow and everything. Yeah, but. Gosh, you know. Yeah, that, that, that's not going to help them with credibility, though, is it? Of course yeah. not. You know, yeah. I wonder as well if the if the Cardano Foundation did the same thing, or or even Charles. They probably did, right? Well, you you've always got the problem that if you're running a a business or a foundation and you've got an investment in crypto, there is a point at which you do have to convert some to keep keep the cash going to pay people. Uh, yeah. I, I wonder if it's a thousand <laughs> at four thousand eight hundred. Yeah, that, wow. that must that must have been a quite a nice one. So again, another um, th thing to go away and research and take a look at. Th thanks for that, JC. Yeah, that's uh, not not great, is it? No. <laughs> no <at all. laughs> I mean, I mean, if they they could have done over time slowly you know but that's why the market makers are there you know just yep. do it slowly not just like hey here's a transaction let me post you the transaction it says here twenty thousand in one go let me just post this to you the actually hidden transaction it's, so it's, <laughs> it's so, so, crazy so it's going to say if, if we take a look on um on e on ether scan is it actually coming from a um a known wallet address then 
Um, yeah, I mean the, the the wallets of the foundations usually are known. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there are people who track them, obviously. You know? Yeah, because this is the thing: people do actually monitor certain wallets. Um, so you see, twenty thousand ether in one go. Jesus. Wow. From the foundation, which I mean, I don't understand why those guys don't, didn't use market makers. For me. I mean, this has a big impact always when somebody dumps like this, you know, uh, it's games might be. I don't know why they do it, honestly. I, th I think it, have you have you linked the wrong block? Because that doesn't look like there's 20,000 ETH. It says there transfer 20,000 ETH. Am, yeah. I looking, am I looking contract in the wrong place? And below. below yeah. The contract ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you now. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some, something else definitely oh well, th these things happen i guess and that m maybe so someone was asking earlier on um what we thought had uh spooked the market and, and changed things and that's the kind of thing that can make a big uh swing on prices so yeah m m maybe maybe that's part of it then so a, bi a big one definitely oh thanks for sharing that fernando yeah. so we, we've got about 10 minutes left I'm always conscious that the, these sessions roll really, really quickly. I don't know, anyone got any questions or, or anything they'd like to ask or anything they'd like to share? The floor is open, as they say. Uh, Gary, is there anyone worth following, say, on Twitter with regard to NFTs? Because I know there's a lot going on in this space. Yeah, so, 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 so I was going to say, Sam, Sam was probably a good one. Um, uh, I've forgotten now. Is it something Viking, your Twitter handle? Sam? Viking Poet 84. Viking Poet 84. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can follow me. But, um, like, the, the big, the, the, the projects, I do, I do a lot of tweet action. So, like, there's a lot of tweets. And, like, um, I've, do you know what? I've, I've won quite a few giveaways as well. So, um, I, don't, I think they've, they, they put them towards me because they think that, I can publicize it in certain certain uh, networks and stuff like that. So I've, I think I've won like something like a thousand pounds worth of giveaways in the last two months. Wow. So there you go. We, we've got it now. Sam is an officially a crypto influencer. I've, I haven't got that many. I haven't got that many. I've only got like 1,300 followers. But um, I think what they, they read your tagline. I'll just put admin or, or a moderator of uh, crypto GB, 33,000 followers. And since I put that, I do see people just like I think is this can this be a coincidence that I keep on like winning inverted commas these giveaways. Okay. So since since I put that in my tagline, I've definitely noticed the. Uh, you know. I, I might try that because I, I keep putting things in my Facebook profile, and it keeps resulting in usually young Asian ladies living in the states who'd like to sell me a Bitcoin contract. <laughs> Yeah, you get a lot of that. <laughs> so, 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 Ernie, that, that, that's probably one of um, follow Sam. The other there's thing there's is... a better guy. There's a better guy than me. DZ ETH. DZ ETH. D E D D double E Z Y dot ETH. He works for Bitboy Crypto, and when he says an NFT goes up, it will go up afterwards, and it, they will. They, I'm not talking percentages. I'm talking X's. Bitboy. You, you said Bitboy. Yeah, it's, it's not. He's he's not Bitboy. He works for Bitboy, but um, he, he works he works for Bitboy. You know, you know how most of the YouTubers work, right, mate? Yeah, I, I, I completely <laughs> understand how they work, but I'm just commenting on the exact when he when he gets behind a project, it, it invariably so, moves. Sorry, Sam, was that DZ dot Eve E V E E T H E T H E T H as in Ethereum? E yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying he's he's a brilliant guy. I'm not saying he's like the moral compass to set yourself by it, but I'm just saying if he if he Someone tips a project, far, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's often the thing with, with like whether it's Twitter or YouTube or um, less so Instagram, occasionally um, TikTok, that it's sometimes worthwhile following someone and then seeing who they follow, uh, and you kind of like build up a whole kind of list on things on that. I, th I think I, I've still got a. A, um, a Twitter list that you can subscribe to that has got people who are, you know, tweeters and that kind of thing. But that's mainly on the crypto side, less on the NFT side. So m maybe I should start up another list. I don't know, Ellen, do you 
watch anyone in particular on the social media side of things? Um, not so much anymore. I, I just do uh, the main YouTubers like BitBoy Crypto and Elliot's Trades and but it's all always about Bitcoin and I don't really care about Bitcoin. You only care about Bitcoin, you say? I don't care about I just know that if it goes down, my portfolio goes down, but I don't know how people can talk for hours on end on, from, on just Bitcoin. I just don't get it. Yeah. So, I, I think that's it. There, there is a world outside of Bitcoin. Although Bitcoin mm -hmm. still, is it 41% of the market cap of all crypto? So it is, it is still, bad, right? yeah, it is still quite significant. Ernie, the other one as well. Um, I run an NFT Telegram group, and you'll sometimes find that what uh, following Telegram groups can be quite good. So as all of you will know on here, I run various WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, which is why when people say, oh, I joined because I saw your message on the, on the Telegram group, it's like it's probably one of about 10 or 15 or something. Um, so if, you're, if anyone's on Telegram, there's uh, NFT community, but that is more around building that community. It, it's got artists on, it's got all sorts on. It's quite a small group at the moment. Um, so that's less about recommendations, that kind of thing. I, I tend to stay away from recommendations because that could be construed as financial advice in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I strictly stay away from that. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, my only advice to people when they get into NFTs is, and I said this a couple of times already here, Gary, is that just be very careful because it is yeah. a very liquid market. Okay. Anything related to art and collectibles is very illiquid. And once you get on it, it's not like you, you, you can sell it on an exchange. Yeah. <laughs> you might be then holding it for months, years, even, you know, it's very liquid. So you need to be careful. You need to choose the right ones that you know that, you, you know, there's going to be a market for it. Otherwise, you, you know, you, you put it for sale and nobody will buy it. Yeah. And then you, you, you've got some, some problems with liquidity there. So be very, very careful with that. Yeah. You know? well and liquidity is a fair thing anyway, generally in the crypto market. That's why I always urge people to be cautious when they were in the ICO space, but well, yeah. when they're ICOs and STOs. It's very different, Gary, because any coin you can just put it on an exchange and sell it, even for, you, you might lose a little bit of money. Yeah, it depends on the price, but you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's liquidity there, unless if, if there is if a rug pull, then you're done, of course. But usually you will be able to sell it. But with NFTs, you know, you stuff if nobody wants to bid for it. Yeah, it's yeah. very well, simple. That's why you want to get in a min price and buy about four or five and then sell them for double on the secondary market straight away, make some profit and hodl one or two and see where it goes. So usually there's a limit to what you can buy. If you can, like, you really want to get on the whitelist. If you can get on the whitelist, then you're basically 95% probability of, of, of tripling your money in some, some ways. So we're not, we're not talking in large amounts. Did you, get, large. did you get on the board bunnies? No, I didn't get on the board bunnies, so no. Mm -hmm. I, I tried as well. I did, I did manage to get on it. So, but, Sam, yeah. from your perspective, do you try and go onto, as you say, the white lists of the, the pre-launch, or, yeah. or would you go onto particular exchanges at all? No, I, I basically what I do, I go onto Discord and I, um, I find out who's in charge of the project, and then I look on their website. And then I see if it's written well or displayed well. And if it's not, I'll say, basically, I, I do copywriting and I'll do it for free if you put me on the whitelist. And it's like writing three or four paragraphs and I get put on a whitelist. So that's what I do. Okay. Well, nice one. <laughs> 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 nice one. So, so that's pretty similar to how, uh, when we were going through like the ICO craze in 2017, 2018, exactly the same where you'd get um, bonuses or bounties either for spotting bugs or for writing articles um, or you get involved in airdrops and that kind of thing. So I guess it's a pretty similar thing to that in, in some ways. Okay. I want to say something with, uh, there to everyone. If you're interested in uh, NFTs and, and metaverse and game and metaverse and all that stuff, there's going to be a massive, massive conference in Dubai uh, in March. It's called Meta Week. 
So the whole week is full of conferences, yeah? Okay. Um, I think, George, you are you are there, right? You, you are the guy of the conference in Dubai, obviously. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's going to be big, this one, yeah? The matter. Yeah, there's a few interesting. There is like actually going to be three or four, not just one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, Dubai is always the interesting place. They, they seem to be um, staying ahead of the curve in terms of keeping on top of this kind of thing. So, yeah, the... February or Feb March will be a bit like October, thirty to forty events. So. Well, that Quite sounds great. What? Watch this space, by the way, because I might be on a Meta website as a copyright very soon. Wink, wink. So uh, I'll, let, I'll let you know when. Uh, so, so Sam, uh, someone just asked as well about your um, twi Twitter handle because I know you mentioned it before. Sorry. M you might you might want to just type it into the chat yeah. for. Uh, okay, we'll do. That. Yeah, always useful. Okay, so we, we've only got a couple of minutes left. The, the hour has flown by. So hopefully, um, for people who are watching, are either online, it's been an interesting session. We covered quite a few things there, really, particularly around this whole emerging NFT space and what's going on in that. Any closing thoughts? Any any hot gossip? Any major things that are happening that we need to be watching out for? Watch out if it goes below twenty eight Bitcoin. That's all I say. So we've had someone saying that the, the hard bottom is going to be 30. You're, you're saying 28. Uh, 30. I, I, I think the resistance is huge at 30, but 28.8 has been the last three times the killer for these guys. There's so much there that, I mean, they, it, it's not fin financially, it's probably not worth for them to do it. Mm -hmm. so the bots, I mean, yeah, the guys with the liquidations. Well, I guess at, at that price, you're beginning to get close to the economic viability of mining as well depending no, on no, no 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 gary no. mining 12 12k to about uh, 17 18 yeah it d depends on where average. you get i guess it depends where you're getting your energy from no no on average seriously if okay, you more, okay if you do more than 20k you are really doing something wrong in in bitcoin mining really really wrong yeah 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 the, that's fair enough okay right on that basis, we're going to close off for the day. Uh, hope everyone has enjoyed this wide range of discussions of all, of all sorts of things. So thanks for coming along today. For those who are watching afterwards, standard YouTube thing of please do click on that subscribe, like button, blah, 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 blah. And hope to see some, if not all of you, and the cat. So Ellen's cat <laughs> is coming up. Quickly, we need to NFT that, and that that'll become uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> that, that that'll beat crypto punks and all that kind of stuff. So, yep, yeah, th thank you very much, uh, everyone who's joined today. Do come again; you're always welcome. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye, all. Bye. 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 Bye